Good morning. It is good to be gathered in the sanctuary and gathered online this morning for worship. God is so pleased that we have uh, stopped the spinning of life for just a few moments to just sit quiet and still and hear God's holy word be spoken out loud and into our hearts and have the opportunity to offer ourselves uh, in honor to our Lord as we prepare for another week ahead of us. I am Kathy Myers, and I just welcome you into this wonderful time of worship. I thank you for continuing the journey of mask wearing. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in our Young Disciples moment. Prepare to do that. Go back to school. Doing that in a much different way. Um, so thank you for your faithfulness uh, to that as we love and care for each other. Um, Valerie Miller is our liturgist this morning, and she has a few things to share with us. Thank you. Uh, if, you'd, uh, quick, if you'd look at the back of your bulletin this morning, there are lots of things going on. Even though we're in the middle of a pandemic, doesn't mean that we've shut down our activities. Uh, we just do them differently. So if you would look at the back of your bulletin and check, also for those of you worshiping at home, and we welcome you, or even here in church, you can visit the website, uh, www.richmondunitedmethodist.com, and enter your attendance through worship check-in. Uh, you can also access the bulletin and hymns on the main page of the website and the link to, you, to the YouTube page. Uh, we will have our lemonade stand out again after church today, uh, outside under the tent. So please stop and have a ref refreshing glass of lemonade. Uh, on the bulletin back, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention Walk is Saturday, September 12th at Hardin Central School Track. Registration begins at 10, the walk begins at noon. And Pastor Kathy has set a goal of $300 to raise. And we have a team, um, Richmond United Methodist. So if you'd like to join that, please let them know in the church office. Uh, I highly recommend it. And you don't have to walk a long time, as I'm told. So it's not like you have to walk a mile or half a mile. You just have to be there. A new small study group begins September 14th. Uh, the Prayers of Jesus. The small group will meet in the church and also on Zoom. Sign up uh, is on the front page of our website or you can call the church office. And having been a participant of the past small groups, they've been not only really um, uh, enlightening and educational, but a lot of fun just to connect with other people in the church. We're still looking for anyone interested in helping with the with our new media center, we have this great new media center. And so if you think you'd like to help uh, or you know somebody who'd like to help, please reach out to Pastor Kathy or Rob Swafford or Jay Hicks or Liz, or basically just shout it out. I'm sure they're glad <laughs> to have it. Uh, and thanks to recent offerings to the pastor's discretionary fund, we have purchased school supplies for the food pantry. So if you know of somebody who is in need of school supplies, please have them contact the church office or you contact the church office for them. And uh, Patty Bamman has an announcement. Yes, thank you. And blessings abound. Thank you, Tom. Yes. 
Now let me invite those of you here in the sanctuary, those of you worshiping at home, let us stand for just a moment in honor of the light of Christ as it enters our worship space. Will you share with me our spoken call to worship? If you were worshiping up with us online, uh, you will find it um, as part of your bulletin, as well as our music is there online also. As we are called into worship, we are asked, do you know about Christ? Were you taught how to live? Do you want to be remade? Will you live a life of love? Yes, we refuse to grumble, complain, or gospel. We won't be catty or harsh. We will be kind and caring as best we can. We will forgive as we have been forgiven. We will love as Christ because he first loved us and gave himself for us. Let us share our opening hymn, Guide Me, O Thy Great Jehovah. Join me in the opening prayer. Living Living God, God, thank thank you for for reworking us to to become become more like Jesus. 
we confess to you that we resist this work in us. We quite like our old selves. The old clothes were comfy and familiar. We want your renewing of us, but often it hurts. We so easily slide back into old habits that include fear, anger, and a sense of self-righteousness. We let cruel words slip out of our mouths, disguised as humor or opinion. Lord God, we confess that we have each of us grieved the Holy Spirit. We are truly sorry. Remake us, Lord, again into your image, for we choose to imitate you, for your ways are kindness, tenderness, forgiveness. We choose to live in love as beloved children, forgiven and free, through what Christ has done for us. Alleluia. Amen. As we uh, share in Young Disciples moment, I'm going to um, just ask you to stay where you are uh, as I share something with you. So last Sunday, uh, we were honored to bless uh, a backpack and one of our professor's bags as we uh, gave thought to uh, heading back to school. And uh, I ran across something this week, and I thought, wow, we didn't even think to bless that. Well, let me go back and get mine while I... We did not even think to bless our mask. Who ever thought <laughs> that we'd be headed back to school uh, wearing masks? But here we are. I wanted to share something with you that I ran across. This is by Diana Butler. Mom. <laughs> there was always a note on that first day, a message in my mother's neat handwriting, little doodles on the page. Every year it was one of her rituals. Maybe it was the PB&J or maybe it was Dr. Jill Biden standing in an empty classroom giving her speech at the Democratic National Convention. But I'm thinking about fall and all the rituals associated with starting school. We've lost so much this year, including the loss of rituals. She went on talking about some of the things that we didn't get to do this year, like the ritual of Passover and Easter. What a different Easter it was. I'm sure it was for you. For those of us who were here in the sanctuary, I missed you guys waving your palm branches on Palm Sunday. We missed uh, all of you singing on Easter Sunday. There were a few of us, and we were so glad to hear each other's voice, but it was really, really different, wasn't it? And I know it was for all of you. She goes on talking about how we missed Fourth of July parades and graduations and anniversaries. We've missed coming to church, uh, especially when folks have been in the hospital and when we face death. Uh, didn't get to have some of the celebrations of life with a funeral in the way that certainly we would have wanted to and had hoped for. Uh, she talked about some of the informal rituals, just having coffee with friends or your neighborhood book club or uh, a gripe session when you gather with friends and you just need to complain about something, going to the gym, dinner at your favorite restaurants. So I'm going to stop right here, and I'm going to ask you, so what have you missed? Just say it out loud. What have you missed? Uh, and this is anybody, but our young disciples especially. What have you missed that you haven't gotten to do because of COVID-19 and our mask wearing and all of that? 
art galleries, choir. Yeah. I'm sorry, say again? Traveling. Yeah, nomad projects. Yeah, time with grandchildren. Sleepovers with friends. <laughs> uh, yeah, those are big things. And, you know, she goes on talking about how there are rituals, kind of summer rituals. Uh, we weren't sure at first if pools were going to open. Um, all kinds of things that maybe we weren't sure if we were going to miss or that we did miss. She goes on talking about how those rituals really shape uh, our lives, you know, and I'm not sure that we appreciated them quite as much or realized how much they shape our lives until those rituals are different or we don't get to do them or we have to figure out how to do them differently. Thanks be to God that God gives us creativity uh, in doing that. So let's talk about some rituals of going back to school. Uh, what are some things that you do when you get ready to go to school that you just kind of do every year, and it's, a, it's a, a thing that you do that just becomes a blessing in your life. For me, it was going shopping, back to school shopping. I always enjoyed getting new clothes, and uh, I still love seeing pencils and notebooks and <laughs> all those things out. I remember going shopping for those things. So have you guys gotten to do those things, go shopping for some of those things? Yeah. I enjoyed, I'm the one that went shopping for the resources for the food pantry, and I realized how long it's been. <laughs> I had to ask a lady who was shopping, please help me <laughs> uh, know what to buy, and she was kind enough to show me uh, the list. So there are many wonderful blessings, uh, and so she encourages us to offer a blessing uh, over some of the new rituals, and so it's a blessing over our and so if you um, have your mask, I want you to just kind of, um, I know we're encouraged not to touch our face very much, but maybe you can just touch your mask at your ear or wherever you want to touch it. And hear this blessing. God bless our mask. May they help protect us, our families, teachers, and friends from COVID-19. Grant us peaceful hearts in these strange times. Help us when we feel angry or afraid and when it seems hard to be brave or kind. Bless these masks and may they be a blessing. Keep those we love safe, healthy, and well. Amen. She goes on to give some uh, tremendous uh, encouragement for uh, parents who are living into online learning, for uh, folks who are facing uh, an empty nest. Um, and so I'm going to um, get Liz to post this on our website, uh, and I'll make a couple of hard copies uh, to be available for you. It's a great article. I hope you'll take time to read it and, and remember the blessing of our mask. So I will tell our young disciples, I have something for you today. I'm going to get Miss Leslin to hold it up. The, uh, not the basket, but the thing right beside it. Yeah. No, that, the other thing, yeah. <laughs> As you touch everything, <laughs> you know, that thing right there. Chuck loves when I do that, the thing, you know. <laughs> the, yes, that is it. So, uh, Miss Leslin, do you remember these? Yeah. I didn't even know they were still around, so hold them up high, Miss Leslin, so we can see them. They're called lemon drops, and we are in a sermon series that's about lemons. So, in the basket right here beside Miss Leslin, there are... Um, and just parents, so you know, it is hard candy. Uh, so, but I want you to come up and just grab one of those. And then also is another one of those seek and find things that I gave away last week, a different one. So guys, come on up and grab one of those. Um, just kind of try to space yourself out getting, getting that. Um, and we just bless you as you get ready to go back to school. All right. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, when I read that this week, I thought, wow, I would not have even thought to uh, bless our mask, but, you know, what a great blessing that uh, Diana Butler-Bass uh, shares with us, and we give her thanks. 
As we come to offer ourselves in prayer, let us uh, center our hearts. You see your liturgy in the bulletin. God said, let there be light, and there was light. This very day, our God has acted. Let us rejoice. Let us pray. New every morning is your love, great God of light. And all day long, you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors and all your creation, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are directed to Psalm Discover the things that you share with us. So please let that be something that guides your prayers. At the back where you picked up your bulletins was also a prayer request card. Um, hope you picked one of those up if there's something you'd like to share with us. For those worshiping online, you uh, can share a prayer through our website. Of course, you can always call our church office or email us, give, uh, shoot us a text. Uh, it'll be our honor to be in prayer with you. There are um, a few things. Also, um, Pastor um, Andy Blackshear from Faith Bridge, where the Millers go when they're uh, at the lake, he has also tested positive. So let's be in prayer uh, for all those pastors. I know many of you probably know many that we have not shared uh, that have tested positive, and we know for some, uh, it'll, you know, they'll feel a little bad. It won't be um, that significant for others, it, it is quite quite significant. So let us be in prayer. Um, also, uh, I share with you. Let's be in prayer for Joe and Jerry Cole's daughter-in-law uh, in Osage Beach Hospital. She is uh, seriously ill, and also Joe's brother is also uh, serious and in a, an assisted living facility in Blue Springs. So let's keep um, Joe and Jerry's family uh, in our prayers. Um, Brad and I had the great honor of uh, attending virtual annual conference yesterday. 
And as we were attending, um, I found myself giving great thanks for our connection in the United Methodist Church, particularly as we saw people commissioned and ordained yesterday, uh, just the faithfulness of connectional ministry and uh, our bishop um, just constantly shared uh, in this tough year that we have faced um, just how uh, pleased he is to see how well we're all responding uh, to this in our churches, in our families, and in our communities. Uh, there were 19 churches that was listed as closing this year. Some of them were on their way there prior to COVID-19, and some of them, uh, it is a result of the difficulty of COVID-19. So we give thanks to God for the life of those churches and those congregations and for how uh, well they lived uh, into faith. Um, we are mindful everything has a lifespan, uh, and some lifespans for churches are very, very long. Um, but we, we just give thanks uh, for those. Uh, we share in all the retirements that happen. I think between last year and this year, we've had 78 pastors retire, which is uh, unheard of uh, in just a couple of years. So we are grateful for their service. Uh, it was good to, uh, to offer blessings and to lift up prayers. I know that there are many things that you want to bring before God uh, in prayer and uh, this morning, our prayers are um, geared in a specific way, uh, particularly connected to our scripture. So you will hear that in the prayer that I share. So all of those things that you want to bring to God uh, in these moments, please do so. Let us pray. Before time existed, holy God, you were there. Before the world came into being, you were there. And long after this creation fades away, you will continue to be. We are mindful that humanity is really just a part of your wonderful creation. And yet you remind us of how important we are to you. Lord, we ask that you grant us the courage like our ancestors before us to follow the pillars of fire that you set before us, leading us to freedom. You are the God who saves us and we are a people in need of saving. Gracious God, thank you that your steadfast love endures forever. Sometimes we can get so caught up in our worries and busyness that we forget that you are God and we are not. Thank you that you are a God who is slow to anger and who always abounds in steadfast love. You are present in all the broken places in our lives and throughout the world. God, long before we drew lines on our maps that separate one people from another, you claimed us as your beloved. Your grace and forgiveness has always surrounded us. Remind us again today, Lord, that we are a forgiven people. And because we are, we are constantly to be mindful of our need to offer forgiveness. May we seek to live in holy love as we prepare to head back into a new school year we are certainly mindful of how different this year is than all the other years we have ever faced. But then again, every year is, isn't it? And every year you are faithful and every year you give us what we need to be your loving servants. 
You are our loving, kind, and holy God. And you will never leave us alone. We thank you for hearing our prayers and our praise this day and always. Hear our prayers now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Join me, won't you, in the prayer for illumination. God, God's source of all light, by your, by your word, word, you give, you give light, light to the soul. Pour, pour out, out on us the spirit of wisdom, of wisdom and understanding that our hearts and minds may be opened. Amen. The scripture this morning is Genesis 39, uh, verse 2. Uh, the Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man. He was in the house of his e Egyptian master. And then um, Genesis 45, 3 to 15. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me, and they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed, angry with yourselves, because you, were, you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in, in this land for two years, and there are five more years in which we will neither plow nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve you, to preserve for you a remnant of earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all of Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me. You, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there since there are five more years of famine to come so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my own mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin, Benjamin's neck and wept while Benjamin wept upon his neck. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. 
This is the word of the Lord. We uh, are in the middle of a sermon series titled, uh, When Life Gives You Lemons, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> um, and it's up to you, it's up to me, uh, to decide what to do with that. A couple of you have been kind enough to uh, send me cards. You know, you never know, I, or I don't, until kind of something is in front of you, don't really notice uh, how much it's out there. Uh, several of you have shared with me cards that had that phrase on it, and you have been kind enough to uh, send those cards to me. Uh, one of them in particular, on the front of the card, it says, when life gives you lemons, dot, 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 you can imagine how that would catch somebody's attention. 
And the inside of the card said, let's grow a garden, start our own business, and retire rich. Take that, life. (laughs) And then the scripture at the bottom of it is from Micah chapter 7, verse 8. And it says, though I have fallen, I will rise. Don't you love that scripture? Though I have fallen, I will rise. You know, life is going to hand, hand us uh, difficult things sometimes, things that might be considered lemons. God never promised us that that would not happen. But what God did promise us is that God would be with us when life hands us lemons, when difficult times come. And God did promise that um, if we let God, that God will redeem all of that in God's timing and in God's way. I hope uh, this past week you have been spending some time just being in the presence of God. I invited you last week uh, as we particularly focused on the 23rd Psalm and how that Psalm in particular uh, really lends itself to a word or a phrase that can help to lead us into this place of centering prayer. And so I invited you to be in centering prayer every day for just a little while for the last seven days. I hope you've done that. A few of you have shared with me uh, your experience doing that. Um, And I hope that it has been so meaningful to you that it's something that you want to do not just for seven days, but it's something that you want to continue uh, to do on and on. Because I I believe, I know, that when we place ourselves in the presence of God uh, at times, not asking God for anything, not telling God anything, just being in the presence of God, that eventually what we learn is God's got a lot that God wants to say to us. Uh, We just have to place ourselves in a position to hear it. The phrase that I followed um, during this past week was the phrase, He leads me beside still waters. And on my second day of centering prayer, I remembered a little later in the afternoon, I remembered the Hebrew for the phrase, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. And the Hebrew for that is, He causes my soul to return. Say that with me. He causes my soul to return. I love that phrase. And I think it's why God helped me to remember my Hebrew class um, and remember that that's what that phrase means. Because he helps my, he causes my soul to return. It's that place where uh, when God leads us beside still waters, that God reminds us Um, that God wants to breathe life into us each and every day. And so we're led to this place where just uh, the breath of God uh, renews us because I don't know about you, but I need that. I need it every day and I need it even more uh, now than I probably have in the past. This place where I just uh, let the chaos and the concerns and the worry, all of that just die away for just a little while And I let God lead me beside still waters. I let God cause my soul to be restored. The Hebrew phrase for God's breath of life is nikmat kayam. I can't do the, you know, nikmat kayam. But it's that place, uh, we hear it most of all in Genesis, the second chapter, when God created Adam. It said, God formed man out of the dirt from the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life and humanity came alive, a living soul. I always think about this, uh, nikmat kayam, the breath of God that is breathed into our bodies, into our lives as humanity is created. It, it, um, It always comes back to me, particularly... Um, at a funeral, when I place my hand on the head of a casket and I say, uh, we return, we, we give this body to its final resting place, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Because we know that breath of life that was first breathed into humanity is no longer a part of that person. 
but yet the breath of life for them uh, is so much different, uh, so much better uh, than anything we could ever imagine. I had the wonderful opportunity of, uh, of meeting a friend of Leslin's this week who is uh, probably pretty close to uh, being in that place of um, knowing that what is beyond uh, this world uh, is so much better than anything that we could experience. And of course, as I was sharing with him, I had my mask on and he said, um, I won't forget you. And I said, I won't forget you either. Uh, and he said, you have very kind eyes. <laughs> and I said, well, I appreciate that because I thought, you know, I guess I hadn't thought about that. When people can't see our mouths, uh, they are noticing and paying attention to our eyes, you know. And he said, I won't forget you on the other side. And, you know, I had a hard time. I got choked up, you know, when I tried to pray with him because I thought, I won't forget you either. Not on this side and not on the other side. The breath of life, God breathed into us. And with that breath of life, we are called to live daily into this world and to know that the world beyond this is so much better than anything that we could ever imagine. And when someone comes close to that place, they start being able to describe that for us. You know, we can only imagine it. You know, but you could hear it in his voice and you could see it in his eyes. He can see beyond what we can see. That breath of God breathed into him here and now, but Nikmat Kayam, the breath of God breathed into him in a new way. You know, this world can really take the wind out of us. <laughs> and God longs every day to give that breath of the Holy Spirit back to us to remind us of who we are and that God really does have all of this, including COVID-19, that God has all of this in hand. This past week, I, I read a sentence that just really has resonated with me, uh, particularly as we uh, were approaching our scripture for today. The sentence said, many times the lemons in life don't come from um, some un." some abstract thing called life. I'll start that again. Many times the lemons in life don't come from some abstract thing called life, but can be caused by the people around us. And so it asks the question, so where's the lemonade when someone has wronged us in this world? One of my uh, favorite modern movies is uh, titled Warrior. And it is the story of two brothers, Tommy and Brendan, and they have been estranged since they were teenagers. Um, they're estranged because they both suffered something very common when they were growing up. Um, and in their suffering, instead of it bringing them closer together, it pulled them further apart. They both experienced the abusiveness uh, of an alcoholic father and the struggle that they had growing up in that environment. And so it pulled them apart. And in this movie, I guess I'm drawn back to this movie periodically because it just reminds me of what can happen to us when we hold a grudge uh, or when we choose uh, not to move beyond something, when we choose not to forgive somebody for something. In this movie, they uh, encounter one another uh, in the boxing ring. I'm not really big on boxing, but whenever I watch this movie, uh, it just makes me see what can happen to us when we hang on too tightly to the hurts of life. As they are in the boxing ring and these two brothers are physically beating each other up, it just paints a picture of, of what can happen. We may not be doing that, but we can surely beat one another up with our words, can't we? or the expressions that we give to one another, or the choice uh, not to give of ourselves um, anymore. But forgiveness, forgiveness opens up uh, a possibility of something brand new. The Apostle Paul reminds us in the book of Ephesians in a section called Rules for the New Life. He says, put away all bitterness and wrath and anger and slander and all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. 
Paul made forgiveness a priority in the churches he planted. Maybe he did that because, um, like so many early disciples, he remembered uh, the importance of Jesus saying the words, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Or perhaps he knew that people cannot live together, particularly in a church. People cannot live together uh, if they don't learn to forgive one another. If they don't learn to get along, it will be a, a very difficult place and space to live in. Same is true for our families. Uh, it's a very difficult place to be, isn't it, if we choose not to forgive each other. Maybe Paul just knew it was just common sense. Because uh, if you think about it, if you have ever been hurt or betrayed by someone, you know what it feels like, don't you, to want to hurt them back. Uh, sometimes you might find yourself almost just waiting for the opportunity uh, to say something or to do something to in some way try to hurt them back in the same way that they have hurt you. But if you really let God uh, mature you, as, as do I, if we really let God mature us in the gift of forgiveness, what we know is that when someone has really hurt us, we're never, we're never going to be able to hurt them in the same way they hurt us. And even if we could, uh, would, it really, would it really make us feel that much better uh, to be able to do that? I have seen folks um, in situations where they hung on to bitterness and hurt and pain so much that it physically changes them. They look different just because of this grudge that they hold on to. So we're constantly hearing in Scripture this place of where God calls us to forgiveness. The lemons of a grudge can really hold us uh, as a prisoner. Uh, we can't become all that God created us to be. Uh, if we hold on to things too tightly, and if we choose not to forgive. One story from the Bible particularly teaches us um, about what happens when lemons uh, get thrown your way, and of course, it's the story of Joseph. Joseph was one of 12 sons of Jacob. He uh, was favored by his father. He was hated by his brothers. He was sold into slavery by his brothers. He was falsely accused of rape. He was imprisoned. Uh, scripture says that eventually uh, he became successful when he interpreted a dream of Pharaoh's and he eventually became second in command in all of Egypt. Now, if we read the whole story of, of Joseph, he wasn't just given one lemon, was he? He was kind of given lemon after lemon after lemon uh, in life. But the great thing is that throughout his entire story, we see that Joseph never let those grudges or um, those difficulties take over. He didn't let the lemons of life sour his heart or his attitude toward God or toward daily living. Throughout it all, uh, Joseph was faithful to God and God was faithful to Joseph. Even when he was a slave, uh, Joseph continued to remain faithfully. And Joseph even let God mature him uh, in those difficult days, uh, mature him so much that when he finally had the opportunity to get back at his brothers for selling him into slavery, he didn't do it. Uh, he had a great opportunity to do it. But when they came to Egypt for help, that's not what he did. He extended and offered them help. When I was preparing th for this sermon, I got to thinking about this uh, DVD that my kids used to watch, uh, and they used to watch it over and over. Some of you remember this, or maybe you're there right now, where your kids get stuck on something, and they watch it over and over and over. I mean, to the point you could almost say it word for word, or you could almost sing the songs. So as I was preparing for this, I got to thinking, about this song, and I thought, oh, that came from that DVD that Brett and Megan got stuck on, and we had to watch this every day for like a year and a half. We watched this movie, and there was a particular song, and it was the story of Joseph, and in this particular uh, 
spot. It is where Joseph has been thrown into prison because Potiphar's wife has said that he was inappropriate with her, which was not true, but he is thrown into prison and he finds this little stub of a tree and he tears off a piece of his clothing and he ties the tree to a stick and then he starts to water this little stub of a tree. Um, and as the days went by, he let God uh, soften and mature his spirit and his heart. While he's watering this tree, he's thinking back on all the lemons, on all the difficulties of his life. But he's singing this beautiful song, and I want you to hear the words. I thought I did what's right. I thought I had the answers. I thought I chose the surest road, but that road brought me here. So I put up a fight, and I told you how to help me. Now, just when I have given up, the truth is coming clear. You know better than I. You know the way. I've let go my need to know why, for you know better than I. It has, if it has been a test, I cannot see the reason. But knowing I don't know is part of getting through. I try to do what's best, and faith has made it easy to see that the best thing I can do is to put my trust in you. For you know better than I. You know the way. I've let go my need to know why. For you know better than I. I saw one cloud and thought it was the sky. I saw a bird and thought that I could follow. But it was you who taught that bird to fly. If I let you reach me, will you teach me? For you know better than I. You know the way. I've let go my need to know why. For you know better than I. That's what Joseph told himself and what he sang to himself through all those days in prison. And he just gave himself fully to God. And God matured his heart and his spirit enough that he didn't want revenge when he finally saw his brothers. All he wanted was reconciliation. Forgiveness is not an easy thing to do. And we could, we could have a whole sermon series on this subject alone. But God calls us to it. And so I want to share with you just a couple of things that I think have been very significant um, in my understanding of knowing how important it is to let go of grudges, because um, that, that can be some of the lemons in life, right? And I don't know where you are right now, but there might be something that you're holding on to. There might be some relationship that you just cannot seem to reconcile some difficulty, some place that you just cannot offer forgiveness. So I want to share just really two things that have been very significant to me in understanding the importance of forgiveness. And the first one is forgiveness is not optional when you are a Christian. It's not. We don't get to choose. <laughs> God says do it. You got to let it go. Because if you don't let it go, it holds your own heart hostage. So we've got to let go of things. And we've got to come to this place of offering forgiveness, forgiveness of ourselves, forgiveness of other people, forgiveness because of situations. We have to come to this place where we offer that to God and we let God mature us enough that we let go of it and we offer forgiveness. And the other thing that I have realized is scripture so often says, you will be forgiven as you forgive. Um, and then that place where I think about how much God has forgiven me. And in that forgiveness, I know that I can turn and offer forgiveness to other people. Again, I don't know where you are. And I don't know if there are things in your own life that you need to offer forgiveness for. But our lemonade stand is going to be open after worship today, and it's a real good place for thoughtfulness. Or for those of you worshiping online, you might have a thoughtful place where you just want to sit and think about any need that you might have to offer forgiveness. It sure is a place where we can take those lemons and make lemonade in the name of Christ. 
Let us pray. Father God, we ask that you go now where words cannot really go. Go deep into the hearts of those who need to hear about the need for forgiveness. Help us to know that when we forgive, it frees our own hearts and we become more and more in the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord was so very, very good at offering forgiveness, even from the cross. He offered it to us. Thank you, God, for the way that you forgive us and for the way that you call us to forgive. Show us what we need to do and give us the courage to do it. In the name of Christ, amen. The Lord invites us to uh, spiritual maturity in many ways. Among those uh, is certainly by offering uh, our generosity of forgiveness, our generosity of time and uh, talent and resources. And so um, we come uh, now, thank you. We come now to this moment of giving thanks to God for the resources that God gives to us. It was one of the ways I appreciated so much our bishop speaking yesterday. Of even during COVID-19, our churches, our congregations, people of God have remained generous people so that the work of the church might continue in our communities. And so thanks be to God. Our offering plates will be at the front and at the back. Uh, if you've not shared your offering before worship or uh, they'll be available after worship. For those of you worshiping online, there is a place to share on our website. Uh, and we just give thanks to God for the opportunity to give. Let us stand now and give God thanks. Let us share together our offertory prayer. Holy God, thank you for making each of us a beloved child in your great family. You guide us by your spirit to the way of life. Through your grace, we have enough to share with our neighbors who are in need. May these offerings bring your word, your kindness, and your love. We pray through Christ who loves us and calls us to his sweet service. Amen. Our closing hymn is Take My Life and Let It Be.
May the spirit of Christ reign over you. May love and kindness and hope and forgiveness always abound in your life. Let us share our closing blessing. May the peace of God enfold us, the love of God uphold us, the wisdom of God control us, and to lead us into all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. There are exits out in the front and in the back. We'll see you at the lemonade stand. <laughs>